Hi guys and welcome back to our FIFA 19 Sunderland Road to Glory career mode. Now, in the last episode I did leave you guys on a little bit of a cliffhanger because I suddenly had to go to work, which I didn't expect that day, but it just, it happens, doesn't it? So anyway, I've made a signing off camera. And the reason I did it off camera is I was looking around, you looking through all your guys' suggestions. Some of them I thought were quite unrealistic, so I thought, you know, I'll, I'll see if I can try and get them incredibly cheap. No one was going for it and I didn't want to waste your time by... You know, just recording and letting you watch me fail countless um, uh, transfers, you know, and not getting anyone. But there was one player who I actually really, really wanted. Uh, it was actually a suggestion that came through quite a while ago, and he's been sat on the shortlist. And I really didn't expect to get him. So uh, I'll show you him now. And here he is. It is Scott McTominay from Manchester United, and we signed him for five. Point one million, and the reason I say it was such a bargain and why it was so difficult is because he was originally worth, as you can see, seven point five. But he was saying that I would have to pay between seven point seven and eight point five million. And if you remember correctly, we only had six millions to play with, and that wasn't including the wages. So really, we had about five million to play with. So originally, I offered four million. Uh, Mourinho wanted like seven million, and he kept sticking on seven million, and I kept sticking on five. And rather than you know, cancelling the negotiations. He kept going backwards and forwards to the point where he actually said he was happy with 5.1 million. And then we went through the uh, the contract talks, which went well, but that the, because of his wages, obviously being at Manchester United, being so high, it drained our entire transfer budget with bonuses and what have you. And it was the only way we could get him over the line. And he's a player I really, really wanted. So I think that's an absolutely excellent sign. And of course, he played for Manchester United. Nowadays, he, he, he doesn't really get a look in at United, of course, with the quality they have. There within their squad, he gets the odd game here and there in like the Carabao Cup and stuff like that, but he didn't really get a look in. So, you know, to come down to the championship, we are top of the league, possibly and most likely going to get promoted. It looks that way anyway, unless something drastic happens. He's going to boost his career by coming towards being the rock in the center of that midfield. He's got that power, Gomez and McTominay as that midfield trio, the sort of base of that midfield. I think that's a really, really solid midfield. I hope you do agree with me that that is a really, really good signing. But we are going to be going into our next match against Aston Villa. As you can see, we are currently six points clear, which seems like a bit of a drastic turnaround. I know we did lose the simulator game in the last game and Brighton do have, or sorry, we have a game in hand over Brighton who are in second place. But still, it's really, really tight in there, isn't it? And we are taking on Aston Villa who are currently 12th. So they're not having the best of seasons. One of the signings that I did actually see as well was James Rodriguez go to Manchester City for 85 million, which is absolutely mad. They're going to be absolutely stacked, aren't they, by the time we do get to the Premier League. But this is, I think that might be the team we're actually going to go with. Yeah, I think that is the team we're going to go with. We have Plazari in goal. We have James Twanzeby, Suter and Acapo across the back. We also have Gomez, Power and McTominay in midfield. I'm really happy now that Power has finally gone up to rated 70. He's been sat on 69 rated for absolutely ages now. But we have Jones, Magia and Oblin up top. Let's get into it. And here we are, guys, at this stage of my life. Can we get ourselves a good performance from our new signing, Scott McTominay? I'm really, really excited to have him. I've never played with him before. It's good that he has a player face as well. As you can see, there was a transfer fee of 5.1 million. He's 23 years of age, obviously coming from Scotland as well. He could play as a central midfielder or as a CDM. He's six foot four, which is absolutely beastly. You know I love me a tall play. We've given the number eight as well. Let's see how he does in this one. It is going to be one of the more difficult teams as well. Come on, lads. Go on, Oblin. That's absolutely class. Flicked on by McTominay. And we can't get in there. Gomez has been wrestled to the ground, but the ref doesn't give anything. Oh, I also forgot to mention as well, guys, off camera, um, we did get the notification that Rico Henry is out for five months, which is absolutely devastating as well. And that was just after the transfer window had closed, so we don't really have a replacement for him as such. Have a crack, son. It takes a big block there, and the keeper punches it away. It is a throw-in. Get the first, James. Well in. Come on, Gomez. Run at him. This is what you're good at. Help him out. On the overlap, that'll do. James, hold it up. Nicely done. Over to McTominay. Well in, McTominay. Have a crack yourself, son. He does strike in. It's ballooned off the... Oh my god, it ballooned off the post and then Oberlin. Was it Magic? Sorry. Sorry, yeah, it was. It was Ob <laughs> Oberlin. The hairstyles and everything are exactly the same almost. And he's smashed that one wide with an open net, basically. Now here is Taylor coming down the left side. And it's a good challenge there from Acapo. So solid at the back. 
And that's a done there by McTominay. Help him out. Get it in. Good ball. Can he get his head in? He can't. Simple as you like. Lovely build-up play. And there it is. It's our man, Josh Madra, of course. I think he's only scored seven or eight goals, but as I've mentioned in previous episodes, everyone is chipping in with the goals so far this season. But what a lovely team move that was. McTominay spreads it out wide for Akapo. I keep saying this. I need to, I'm need i going to do it in this episode. I want to check how many assists Akapo has got because he seems to be getting the assists for almost every single goal. Get it out, get it out, get it out! Oh, it's a big mess in the box there. No one was clearing it away. And it fell for the Villa attacker. And luckily, Pizarri got his body behind the ball. Oh, it's a good chance for them. And it's a another world-class save there by Pizarri. He's really saving our arses in this one. Really starting to dominate this now, Villa. Down the right again, it's El Mohamedi. Get it out, that'll do. Defending for our lives. And there goes the half-time whistle, guys. We really controlled the game for the opening sort of 25 minutes. But then the second half of the first half was all Villa. This could be a really interesting second half. Come on, that break. Get James in over the top. The left back, as he likes to do. Very good chance. Take a touch. Hit it. Oh, I didn't want to hit it first time so I knew he'd mess it up. Now here is power from distance and it's sailed quite easily. To the keeper. Help him out. That's it, James. Get the cross in. Towards McTominay. He does get the header on and it's directed well. Got a decent amount of power behind it. Keeper's held it. Get it out, get it out, get it out to one to be. Great header from our captain. The steal coming forward now. Lansbury. Al Mohamedi. Got a to get the very decent players on their side and they've got a corner now Robinson and Gooch are both coming on but we have to defend this corner first and it is Grealish who's going to take it get it away, get it away come on and again Gomez and again well played well kind of we've still got the ball in a dangerous area but it is McTominay who's actually been very very impressive in this game apart from that pass here they come again Villa oh no surely not Surely that was offside ref. It hasn't been given. They need to get it away and they've headed it wide. Oh, this is really good stuff here now. It is James. He goes for it himself and it's an absolute rocket. It's a beauty from Reese James. The build-up play was so, so good. Just keeping hold of the ball. Really patient. Opened up for James onto his left foot. Oh, and it's that bloody paintwork again. It's always getting in the way. But what a touch. Lovely little touch. Opens up. Drills it across goal. It's a beautiful little finish. 2-0. And that has to be game over. And I think for the first time in quite a while, I don't think we deserve to win this game at all. And there goes the full-time whistle, guys. A really hard-fought performance. I think we played well in terms of, you know, defensively. We were quite solid all over the park. But Villa had more than enough chances to see this game to bed but Flazori saved our arses on several occasions and McTominay had a very good game as well he almost has sort of like a Gerrard-esque feel about him the way he controls the ball he wins everything in the air maybe that's not Gerrard's you know or what Gerrard was playing it wasn't his greatest thing heading the ball but he because he's here six foot four he's winning everything in the air his passing was really good his tackling was good his just general play was very 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 very, very solid God, I'm stuttering like mad today and after that game we are still six points clear at the top of the league with a game in hand over Brighton but next up we are going to be taking on Birmingham and uh, their striker Shea Adams is a player that has been screamed at me in the comments for quite some time now but at the same time we've got four strikers who are all doing the jobs there maybe if we get to the Premier League and there's obviously some players that might not get to that level Shea Adams might be someone I'd look at I did look at his price tag and it is eight plus million so there was no way we could have really got him anyway but uh, let's sort the team out for this game. And this is the side I'm going to go with. I've got Plazari in goal, James Twan to be Clark and Acapo across the back. We have Embleton making a start today, who's been improving massively. We also have Power and McTominay in there. We have Jones, Magic and Vyman starting this one across the top. Let's get into it. And here we are, guys, away from home. It's another rainy day. You was mentioned in the comment in the last episode that every single game seems to be raining recently, which is... It's true. <laughs> Every game it just seems to be pouring it down. Well, that is England for you. It rains quite a lot. But here is the table. I think Birmingham are currently a look to the right mid-table, about 13th, 14th. So it's another team that aren't doing massively well, but they do have that danger man, Shea Adams, up top for them. 
He wish I had him straight away. Oh, really? I was literally just getting settled there. I didn't expect that shot at all. It was a cracking little effort as well from Shadam's first time from some way out. And Plazario to pull off a big, big save. Come on, get it away. That's awful, awful defending. But luckily for us, it was an easy save for Plazario to make that time. Here is Embleton. Gets it out wide for Rhys James. Get it inside again. Here is Josh Madger. Slides your man through. He tried to. He's hit it on the volley. And it's a good save. Help him out. It is power. Have a crack, son. It has been blocked. But now where is McTominay? Akpo gets it in towards Madger. And it's another assist. And it's another goal for Madger. What a strike that was. A bit of a mess around the edge of the box, but it did manage to fall to Akpo. Drilled it in, and what a little volley that was from Josh Madger, who just can't stop scoring at the minute. The original shot was blocked. McTominay onto Akpo, and what a strike that was. An absolute ferocious effort, and it's his eighth goal, Josh Madger. Are they going to keep it in here? It looks like they are. Good chance for them. It's a very good piece of skill there, and it's not the greatest of balls. I love that skill there. A little touch away from the man. And the turn, strike it and oh, that would have been beautiful, but you're just not good enough, son. Chase it, that's a great ball there for Andreas Weiman. He loves to come inside, and he has done. It is Weiman to the byline, dink it across, goal, it took a deflection and it's gone in. The cross has been turned in by a Birmingham player. Brilliant little run from him, very dangerous run. They could do very little about it, they haven't scored a goal like that yet, as, you know, a cross come deflection. And it's beat the keeper. Nicely done. 2-0, easy as you like. Colin with the own goal. 2-0. I realise what I said in the build-up to that goal, by the way. Vyman likes to come inside. Do not make a meme out of me, please. Thank you. <laughs> so, no, now coming down the left-hand side. Pulls it back to the edge of the box. It's a good strike. And it's a equally good save as the ball skids across the soaking wet surface. <laughs> Why is everything I'm saying today just coming across as... Sexual somehow, just shut up. And there goes the half-time whistle, guys. It's actually been quite a scrappy game. It's been pretty even as well, but we've just somehow come away at half-time with a two-goal lead. Get your head in it. And again, well in. Come on, get it away. Get it away. They're just toying with us. You're toying with us. Just get it out. It's a good strike. No, it's not. It's been blocked and it has been struck again. It's 2-1. I did say it had been coming in terms of it being an end-to-end -end game. Bit scrappy. It could have gone to anyone. Oh dear, is a comeback on for Birmingham. First strike was blocked, fell straight back to him and he's just easy as you like, smashed it into that near corner, no chance for Plazari and that's Asano's eighth goal of the season so far. Here is Akapo, can he get himself another assist? Great ball in, is it? It is, it's 3-1 and it is another assist from Akapo. 2, Madger, 3 1, that'll do. Surely the comeback isn't on anymore. An immediate response. I can't believe it. Like I said, I am going to check Akpo and how many assists he's got because it has to be in double figures. It has to be. It's another inch perfect ball from Akapo. I'm not even sure what his crossing stats are, but the crosses he puts in are just outstanding. Help him out. Get Akapo in. We know he can cross a ball. It is Akapo. We'll always pick out his man. And it, well, that time he didn't because they didn't. Power. You have a crack son and <laughs> is hilarious. Now Oberlin and Gomez will both be coming on with Madger and El Embleton coming off. Embleton not particularly impressive in this game. Normally he's been very good when we have used him in the few times that we have. But today he just seems a little bit out of his depth. Help him out, help him out, make the run. Well in. It is McTominay. He does, <laughs> he goes for goal. That was him going for goal. Asano again. Jota with the strike and Plazari dramatically rises to grab that one. Oh, that is beautiful stuff. On the counter now. It is Vyman. Make sure your first touch is good. Get it towards the back post. Can anyone get there? It's still in there. And it's been cleared away. There we go. There's a full time whistle. As finished 3 1. It ended up being a little bit more difficult than it had to be once Birmingham did get that goal back. But we managed to get ourselves. Uh, or regain our two goal advantage again and we've seen it out from there relatively easily get in and after that win we are still 
six points clear at the top of the league again with Brighton having themselves, or sorry, with us having a game in hand on Brighton. But now we are going to be simulating this next game against 20th placed Blackburn. Last time we did simulate, we lost. Will it happen again? It won't, but we do only manage to get ourselves a draw with Oberlin getting the goal. Now, one thing I did say I was going to do is check on the uh, the assists that Akpo has got because he must have a load. He must. Get out. He's only got eight, sorry, six assists. That's ridiculous. That I'm sure he's set up a few, or some of them maybe have got a deflection that'd be taken off him. But only six assists. That's mad. I don't think that's right, to be honest with you guys, because he's set up almost every single goal, or most goals, so far this year. But anyway, this is where we're going to leave the episode, guys. Next up, we will be taking on Brighton, a big top of the table clash there, as they are looking to climb back at the top of the table. So if you have enjoyed, please smash the like button for me. It would be massively, massively appreciated. And subscribe to the channel if you're not already to become a fully-fledged member of the Sony Army. But for now, you take care and stay jamming. <laughs>